today we are going to have an open forum, but before that we are going to hear a short exhortation. Amen. And after the exhortation, we are all going to deliberate and bring our ideas how we can move this great church of God forward. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's necessary to do those kind of things so that we know where we are falling short and where we can work on it. Amen. Amen. But I'm really proud of this church. I'm proud of you. Amen. Amen. Uh, our elders are in the house. I think very soon, maybe one has already left, and the JC has already left, Elder Daniel Benjamin or Yemi is also here, the youth leader, the youth leader, very soon he will leave us because he has he's on a youth assignment. Amen. To make me, amen. Elder Stephen Clinton, the former president of the United States of America, is also here. But he's the uh, president of Antopia. <laughs> we have our own elder Andrews Wu and Sakousu and Sausu in the house, amen. And the district financial secretary. Kum, the local treasurer, Dr. Joe Aoku, is always busy in the house of the Lord. We see him doing his work. Amen. I'm also here. Amen. Amen. And, uh, He's a presider. He's a presider. <laughs> and one of our great men in the Church of Pentecost in Belgium, the only coordinator of the PRWC Belgium. And in fact, in the whole of Europe, it is only his PRWC, that is PRWC. Amen. 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 Even China, yeah. they don't come. Yeah. Because at PRWC Belgium is an example to other nations. Yeah. No other person, but our own other servant, our Antikaketi, is in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And today, the man that God is going to use to bless us within this 15 to maximum 20 minutes is our own elder, Andrew Schoolsman. So let us make the Lord for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is too small. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to teach. I want. I'm going to exhort. Amen. 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 I'm not going to pray anymore because the time is very short. Fire is already here. God is here. Amen. If you know God is here, raise your hand and see. Yes, Amen. 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 There's a difference between preaching, teaching, and exhortation. Amen. 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 Exhortation comes from the word to exhort. To exhort means to advise earnestly. To admonish somebody and advise him keenly. Without forcing, without pushing. So if you don't see me jumping and saying, don't be worried. I'm not preaching. Amen. 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 Through the whole year, a thing has been given. And the theme is hearing and Oh, so that's what you know from January to November. What's the theme of the whole year? Hearing and obeying the voice of the Lord in my generation. Who has heard the voice of the Lord before? So January to November, you must hear the voice of the Lord and obey it. Amen. But who has heard the voice of the Lord this year? Raise your hand, don't be shy. Let me see it. Good. All the elders, God has heard. So only two people that God has heard them. Wow. Okay. The theme was taken from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 to 10, right? When Samuel was in the house of Eli. Let's read there. Let's go there and read something. We're not going to read the whole verse, but from verse 8 alone. First Samuel chapter 3, if you are there or is somebody there, you can read for me before I read the King James. The verse 8. First Samuel chapter 3. Is nobody there? Chapter 3. I want the King James, please. Are you there? Yes. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And the Lord called Samuel again. Say it again. For how many times? The third time. That means he had called him earlier once, twice, and the third time. What happened? So he arose and mm -hmm. went to Eli. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. here I am, mm -hmm. for you did call me. Pause. Anytime God called Samuel, he ran to who? How many times did he go? Three times. Have you asked yourself why he did that? 
So if you don't hear what God's voice and God tells you something, what will you do? Because you can't recognize the voice, you run to somebody else. So have you asked yourself, why did Samuel run to Eli for three times? It has never come across your mind, your mind. Have you? Have you thought about that? Here is a mystery here. Please, you can sit down for me. Here lies this. Take it in your spirit. Whenever God speaks, the leader's voice resembles and is in the echo of God's voice. Someone ran to Eli because he thought you are calling me. That means Eli's voice is the same as God's voice. So your leader's voice is God's voice. Amen. Your leader's voice is God's voice. Hallelujah. Amen. Through the year, this thing was given to the head. It came down to our national head, to our district pastors, to our presiding, to the elders. Any leader who leads you here in the name of God carries God's voice. That was why Eli, uh, Samuel had to run to Eli and say, I have come because you called me. This young boy had been living with Eli for years. So it's a voice that he heard. But how come he heard a strange voice, but he ran to Eli? That tells you and I that God's voice is in the English. So anytime somebody stands here, I'm listening the word of God to you. He's not the one speaking. It's who is speaking. That was why Samuel had to run to Eli. There's power in voice. Let's look at another example. Jesus had how many disciples? Twelve. Twelve. Which one of them betrayed him? How many of them betrayed him? How many? Two. Two. Two, Two betrayed him. One sold him for money. The one said, I don't know him. I don't know him. He denied him. I use the word denied. Sorry. He, Peter denied Jesus how many times? How many times did Samuel hear God's voice? Is that a coincidence? There's something in here. Anytime something happens three times, it's an emphasis. It's an emphasis. The third time that the girl came to, or the who came to Peter, they said, you were with Jesus. They said, ah, I don't know this man. And he, the people said, even your voice, even your voice betrays you that you are with him. Why did they say so? They will hear Jesus voice through Peter. Was Peter a leader? Yes. So anytime you want to hear God's voice, listen to your leaders. Amen. Was Jesus Christ a leader? Yes. Was Jesus a leader? Yes. Is he still a leader? Yes. That Jesus speak to you? Yes. Who said, if you love me, obey my commandments? Yes. Who said that? Jesus. Have you heard that before? Yes. Are you obeying that? Yes. See, here we are. We hear the word of the Lord many times, but we don't take time to let it settle. Let it digest and take the gist out of it. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. The question is, preach commandments. I told you I'm not preaching today. But let me take you into this. Matthew 22, verse 36. Some people came to Jesus and said, oh, what is the greatest commandment in the Bible? And Jesus said, he replied, Love your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Who is speaking here? Jesus. Good. That is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second one is like this. Love your neighbor as, as, do we all know the scriptures? Yes. Love your neighbor as, who is your neighbor? Meet the man who lives in number three and Fiatek, and you live in number two and Fiatek. You're a good man. That's not what I'm talking about. We are each other's neighbors. We are brothers and sisters. If he says, say, the greatest commandment is to love God, and the greatest commandment is to love one another, and you say you have not heard this before, then which voice are you obeying? Which voice are you obeying? Love is something very deep and very precious. Maybe you don't know the person you have been asked. I will use the word commanded, but he said commanded to love. 
maybe you don't know the person was supposed to. That's why you are doing such kind of things with that person. If you know the person was supposed to love, huh, you start loving him right now. Irrespective of what he has done, you let it go. Amen. Amen. There are different kinds of love. Eros is a love. That's a love that partners, woman and husband and wife, they have with each other. Serigo, brothers and friends have among each other. But God in love is a gap in love. That's the kind of love that Jesus is talking about. A love that it, it, it doesn't matter what I do, you find a way to forgive me. It doesn't matter how I sleep, you come back looking for me. It doesn't matter, who, it's, it, it's unconditional. It's not because I like you, that's why you have to like me back. Not because I love you, that's why you have to love me back. No, that is unconditional. That means if I don't do it, you will not do it. God's life is not like that. God's life is the love that says, even though while you are yet a sinner, I came to die for you. And that's the kind of love he wants you and I to have. It's not a Christmas love that it is end of the year. I know your birthday was February. I have to wait and wait and wait and wait until December before I buy you a gift. Mm -mm. Love is when you pick up your phone and call me and say, how are you doing, brother? Life is when you see that I'm in pain and you come to comfort me. Life is when you hear that a stranger is about to go and visit him. Life is when you hear something bad about your brother and say, mm, I'm not sure it's true. So hatred is like, ah, that guy, that's how he is. He deserves it. That is hatred. That's not love. The love God sees us to exalt to today's standard is an agape love. That you can look your brother in the eye and tell the truth. Even though it pains, but look to the eye and see the truth. That is love. Amen. That is love. So if you can hear the voice of God, He says, Love. Love. Most of the time, we mess around this word love because we don't even know ourselves. We don't know who we are. Last time I said the other day on Friday that if you don't know who you are, you can never be who you are. Let me ask this question Does God have love? Is love. Is love. Oh, God is love. is love. God is love. Thank you. God is love. Good. Second question. Are you a child of God? Yes. Are you a child of God? Yes. Somebody's here near. That means you are half half. I'm a Ghanaian. I'm a Shanti. I have a son. He will never be a uh, uh, other tribe. It can be. I produce my kind. I reproduce myself. You get me now? Yes. So if God reproduces himself, that means the exact copy of God must come. That's how it is. So is God love? Yes. Are you love? Yes. Or do you have love? No. Yes. What we have now is we have love. And that is false. We shouldn't have love. We should be love. That's what the Bible says, be ye holy. He didn't say, do ye holy. Be. Be love. Be love is let us love. I will want them to love. Amen. So if you are love, no matter what happens, let me give a, a small illustration of who you are. You see, when any human being stands, you have a structure. See, coordinator is very tall, young man. I'm, I'm not tall like him. I am bulky. No uh, maybe it's is slang and tall. That is outlet structure. Let's go to the Bible and see how your structure is supposed to be. Psalm 139. If we are all from one father, Jesus said, when you pray, say, our father, our father. That first sentence brings a unity among us. If you all have one father and we have different faces, it's not a problem. But one thing must be identical among us. One thing must be identical among us. <laughs> Psalm 139, verse 14. Who is there, please? Yes. I will be standing to you. Uh -huh. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Ah, hold on. What is the first word that in that you Bible? Verse 14. Look into it. Anytime you come to please bring the Bible. Look into it and tell me the first word. I want the first way. The first way. The first way. The first way. 
So I'm exhorting you today that you read it along. I will give you, I will give thanks to you, mm -hmm. for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm. Your works are wonderful, mm. and so knows that very well. Mm. Continue. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. My frame wasn't hidden from you mm. when I was made in secret, mm -hmm. woven together in the deep depth of the earth. Mm -hmm. Your eyes saw my body. Mm -hmm. In your books they were all written, mm -hmm. the days that were ordained for me, mm -hmm. when as yet there were none of them. Mm -hmm. How precious to me are your thoughts. It's okay, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. When we start from the verse 14, he said, I will praise you. Why? Because I am. Yeah. Anytime you are reading the Bible like this in Psalm and I is there, it's you. So you are saying, I am fearfully. The word fearfully are two words joined together. Fear and? So that means I am full of fear. When God was making me, God, the Bible says I, eh? so it's you. When he was making me, he made, a, he made sure he doesn't make a mistake. With keen fear, he put me together. So if God has put me together in such a fearful way, who, how dare you can't love me but to hate me? You don't know the person you're supposed to love. That's why you are, you are messing around. Let me continue. We said, I am wonderfully. The Greek word that they use for that word wonderful, they couldn't find exact word. So they combined two words. Wonderful. That is, I am full of wonder. When you see me walking, 